Hey guys, what's going on? Well, I just thought I'd get out one of my pythons. I hadn't hit one out in a while, and uh, this is the four inch, brand new in the box, never been fired. You know the drill on on my guns. Uh, I've got the box and the paperwork and the tag. Uh, you know, it's got the hang tag and all that on it, but. Uh, I don't keep my guns here, I keep them in the vault, and, uh, but I decided to get one out, and uh, it's a beautiful 4 inch version, and these are iframe uh, Colts, and you'll see Colt King Cobras, and you'll see Lawmans, you'll see Troopers, uh, and those were on a different frame and also like the D-frame Colts that are Detective Specials and Diamondbacks. They're beautiful guns. Any Colt, anybody who owns a Colt uh, just is thrilled with it. I haven't met anybody who is not thrilled with uh, the beauty of a Colt, no matter what the model. And Smith & Wesson makes great guns. I mean, they're just really, really nice. But the Colt is just a step above. And they always have been in my eyes. And that's a very controversial statement. But at the same time, that's just the way I feel about it. And everybody else, you know, can have their own opinion. But, you know, there's one thing I do know and I do know about gun values and I do know about uh, the inner workings of these guns. I'm not very good at talking about uh, things on videos and I get a lot of people saying, well you forgot to say this or what about this or what about that. Well, you know, I'm not that, uh, that great at making videos but I do my best and I like to show you cool things. And this is one of the Colts that was uh, double dipped in the royal blue. And like I said, I sent it to the custom shop to have that done. It cost quite a bit to do, but it was well worth it because I love royal blue. And uh, the royal blue finish, it gave it a hue that is darker. And it, it it's kind of reminiscent of the pythons when they first put them out in the 50s that had the didn't have the thumb thumb rest here you know they used to just have checkers all the way up and that would even go along right here uh, their walnut checkered grips at one time uh, police departments you know some of them would get cold pythons and they would tell the dealers uh, put pack Myers on them, you know, we want pack Meyer grips, uh, or Hogue, or, you know, so, and they'd say, oh, you do, okay, well, uh, we can do that, you know, oh, uh, recoil, you don't like recoil, sure, no problem, we'll take off these beautiful walnut grips, and we'll give you some plastic, uh, grips, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for you, no problem, you know, it'll only be 15 bucks more for me to do that, and they've held on to these grips, and uh, there are a lot of gun dealers out that are old school and they chuckle at uh, they chuckle at that situation when those grips were really in vogue yeah when you shoot one of these guns uh, the recoil is going to be a little bit harsher uh, you know 357 magnums I don't believe kick that much I just don't I mean uh, 44 magnums kick a little bit harder but you know, for for what they are, the recoil's really not bad. Uh, in fact, it's plus P, you know, plus P, plus P plus rounds and things like that. You know, they're they're not going to kick that bad. You know, you're not going to unless you're, you know, a real limp wrist. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything. Uh, off color there. I'm just saying if you know if you don't have the strength in your wrist, uh, you know, 
yeah, the gun's going to whip back on you, but uh, you do need to learn how to control a firearm. You'll notice that my finger uh, is on the grips here, and uh, the reason that it is is because I will touch this gun quite a bit, but right now I don't have the appropriate cloth. Uh, I baby these things. And, you know, I've got a lot of people saying, oh, you're a pussy for not shooting them. Well, you know, I do have other, other handguns that I fire on a regular basis. I'm not very happy with, but, you know, a Colt Python that, you know, that is absolutely meant uh, yeah, it's been test fired at the factory in Smith and Wesson. Uh, at the time, uh, they made the I believe it was a 686. No, it was a 629. I think it was the one dirty, dirty Harry had, 44 Magnum. And uh, my uncle bought one, and it had the big, you know, big barrel. I think it was only a six-inch barrel, and. Uh, but that thing kicked like a dog, and you know, a very, very bad dog. And uh, you know, it. One thing I noticed was when it came out of the box, uh, Smith and Wesson did not. After they shot it, they didn't clean it. So you know, when you got the got your got your firearm, especially one of those beautiful Smith and Wessons. Uh, you know, it came to you dirty. You know, Colt doesn't really do that. You know, Colt puts a lot of, you know, a lot of, all the lock works inside here are hand polished and hand fitted. You know, it's, it, it gives you, uh, it's, the best way I can describe it is like butter. Uh, it's like warm butter when you pull the trigger and when you cock cock it back. Uh, as far as cylinder, uh, you know, cylinder line, yeah, there's a little bit, uh, because I do handle this gun. And uh, so there's very few handguns that are around that uh, don't have any kind of cylinder uh, cylinder scoring like you see here you know it's very you know un unless well it's just very very rare I, I've I've owned a lot of guns I own a lot of guns and it's very rare to not have scoring on a gun but this is just a beautiful piece I like it it's got a very very nice finger groove trigger. It's got the vent rib barrel. It does have the red insert. I've got an eight inch python that doesn't. And it also doesn't have the white outline sights. This is an early, early 80s model. And uh, Colt started having a little bit of trouble in the mid 80s and I knew that they were going downhill. And, but fortunately they produced this gun uh, at a time when they weren't having difficulty and I was very lucky and I just had the money at the right time these guns the gun as it sits right now is worth uh, unfired with the tags it, I believe I paid about 800 for it and now they're over two thousand, so that's two grand sitting right there. And you know the walnut grips, the boxes alone sell for two hundred. You know, so I mean, you know, when when those pythons first came out, you know, you could just buy them for, you know, for the price of a very cheap iPod. And you know, it'd be nice to get in the time machine and just go back and pick up those old guns. All those beautiful, beautiful steel, blue steel revolvers. You can have Glocks. You can have, uh, you can have all kinds of guns. All the polymer, 
and guns, yeah, they're very good. They're very good shooters, but man, there's something classic about a python. And I don't care who you are. Uh, there's a sexiness that is built into these guns. And they're just damn sexy guns. Uh, you know, they're just like a very, very hot woman. <laughs> you know, and they're very accurate. They're very good with the trigger pull. There were, at some point, uh, there was sometimes when they actually, when these pythons, they, uh, people who had pythons and they were involved in shooting, uh, shootings, they actually tried to uh, use the fact that the, the hand-fitted lock works and the, the polished, uh, you can polish lock works in order to lighten trigger pull. And I believe that's still today true. Uh, you know, I don't think it's as common because most people, you know, have automatics and uh, they don't just fire one shot into you, they fire several. But, you know, I mean, when it came to uh, shootings and officer shootings, uh, I'll turn this auto on. When it came to officer shoot shootings and things, they would bring in the fact that the Python did have uh, a very light and a very smooth trigger pull, but that's actually to the advantage. Uh, single, double action, and just beautiful. This, I think, I've got the, I've got the two, the four, the six, and the eight. You can go back in my videos and you can see them. Uh, I don't get these out very often because they're very expensive guns and yes I do have Colts that I shoot and I have a lot of fun shooting them but there are some Colts that that I bought just for pure investment and I'll tell you this has been one good investment you can buy knives you can buy gold you can buy a lot of things but one thing that has been very very solid has been the value of these handguns. You know, when you could buy one for, you know, $152, uh, and that very same gun, if you hadn't fired it, if you kept it in the box, it would be like a time capsule. So, you know, that gun would bring today, oh, 25, you know, I'd say probably 35,000, or I mean 3,500 uh, dollars, and I would say that's that's an easy, safe, immediate payment. Uh, how many, how many, how many things can you say that about? You know, there's not very many stocks that can do that, and owning pythons and getting to just enjoy the pure beauty of them. And if you've ever fired one, there's nothing like it, you know. I mean, it's just a very, very accurate, very, very well-controlled, very, very, very well-balanced gun. The walnut, checkered walnut grips are just beautiful. I could just go on and on you know, the rear sights. One one thing I wish I would have done, and I just kicked myself in the ass over and over again, is for not getting, I bought one 8 inch uh, blue python. And uh, one thing I wish I would have gotten was, I've got the two, the four, the six, and the eight. And, but one thing I wish I would have picked up, two of them. Uh, one is a, twin pack of colts called snake eyes they have ivory uh, ivory grips one's chrome and it's two and a half inch barrel the other one is uh, royal blue with a two and a half inch barrel and they came with dice a presentation uh, presentation uh, case and I mean all kinds of very cool stuff that I mean just go for 
an outstanding fortune and plus they had ivory grips true ivory grips and they were actually I believe yeah snake eyes they had the dice that were actually on the grips uh, inlaid so that one and then the Colt Python Hunter they made a Python target which was 38 caliber this is 357 Magnum uh, but they did make a Python Hunter and it had a Leupold or a Burris scope on it and I wish I would have picked one up I just you know if you just get in the time capsule and go back it was an 8 inch and it came in a Halliburton case a fitted Halliburton case with a cleaning rod and oh man I've never been able to find one and I just wish at the time I think they're about they're about nine hundred thousand bucks but man to have one now as it was the reason I didn't get that done was because there was milling that was done right here and right on the ramp in two places on the ramp and it cut the line of the gun up I thought but I was short-sighted in my thought because you know that that particular Python Hunter uh, is so sought after right now and it's been sought after for years I mean decades you know it's at least well at least one decade 15 years 10-15 years you just don't find them anymore but the Colt Python is just such a beautiful firearm and I really like it 16 minutes in. Take it easy, guys.